All right, let's talk about creating your Unit 4 homework assignment. You should have already watched the assigned lynda.com tutorials showing you how to use various HTML elements. Let's translate that into creating your next file in Optana 4 and how I want you to structure things. For each week that you have an HTML coding assignment, I'm going to want you to create a folder for that unit. To create a folder, you'll go to your web scripting project, right click, and choose new folder. And we're going to call this folder unit, um, unit 4. And then I'll hit finish and I'll have a unit folder folder. Now I'm going to choose a new from template and we're going to use the same sort of HTML that they're using in the video that you're watching from lynda.com. So we're going to use a XHTML transitional which is the standard that is being well supported now that there's a strong move into HTML5 and we'll get into HTML5 in the later part of the semester. Make sure when you rename this that you leave the dot HTML file extension at the end or it will not work and I'm just going to call this unit 4-1.html and then I'm going to hit finish and that's going to give me a template to get started. You're going to leave the doc type and all of these generic things that you need in every HTML file alone and this just says that we're using XHTML 1.0 transitional and where the browser can validate the code and that we're working with English and then we get into the head section which is where we start making changes and I'm going to just call this Mary's unit 4-1 and I'm going to put spaces I do want spaces in my title, I do not want spaces in my file name. When I start adding content to the body, I can go in here and I can put in H1, which is a heading 1, it has the strongest impact and should it should describe the contents of the page. Mary's unit, or let's, this one's about me, so it's just going to be Mary Winchester. And that's my heading. And then I'm going to start typing in some paragraphs with the paragraph tag. Hi, my name is Mary. I have been programming websites since 1997. The web has changed a lot in this time. Now I just want to show you something here. If I were to preview this and to preview it I need to save it and then I need to click the preview button and you'll see that this is all everything they typed is in here. Now I find it easier personally to not just type off the edge of the screen. So I can hit enter here and you might think that by entering enter after 1997, again save before you preview, that it would change, but it doesn't. The white space is ignored. It will accept one space, but let's say I put a whole bunch of spaces right here. The web browser will totally ignore anything more than one space. So white space is just to help you in organizing your program. The browser will ignore that. So you have been given an assignment to do a whole bunch of different content and do some styling for it. For example, I'm going to put in a background and I want you to see style equals background and then I would put in a hexadecimal code. Let's just try this one. All hexadecimal codes start with a pound sign. I'm going to put an 8 Three zeros eight zero, and I'm going to save this. And I'm going to let you see what it looks like. Well, that's incredibly bright and very hard to read. Well, how do you know what to color to pick? I strongly recommend bookmarking a color picker site. I like the one from the W3 Schools. There's a bunch of really good ones out there. This is nice. You can pick any color you want, and then I can go into paler shades here. 
And then I can just copy, make sure to include that hash mark or pound sign, and I can put in the code for the color I want right here. Save it, and I can test it again, and there you go. Now it's much easier to read. Now you'll notice that I'm using a serif font, and a serif font has these lines at the top and the bottom, bottom of the words. That helps your eyes track them along a page if you're working in paper. Uh, studies have shown that sans, or serif fonts are actually harder to read on the web because of the lower resolution. So I want to use a sans serif font. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to do style equals font family and one of the things I like about Optana is it shows you where these codes are supported and this is part of the CSS core it's well supported so I'm going to go ahead and use it and I'm just going to do sans serif and I can either type it or just click on it and then when I change that now notice this is just my paragraph that I've changed I'm going to again choose save preview and that changes that, and to me that's significantly easier to read. And then I can be lazy slash efficient, good programmers are all efficient. And I can copy, I don't want the whole thing, just this portion. I can copy, and I can paste it right here. And I'm just putting a space in here. I'm not sure if this will work or not, let's check, because I did something wrong. Nope, it didn't work. And the reason why is that if you have multiple styles listed, you have to separate them with a semicolon. So now I will save that again, and it worked just fine. So this is how you're going to go through and type in the text and edit your page. Now I also have for my entire web scripting unit an index page, which I'm going to open. And I just used this from an HTML5 template. And I've actually practiced this, so I've done it a couple times. So I'm going to add in a link in my list. And the links are anchor, href, equals. And one of the things I like about Optana is it'll let me just pick my unit 4. And then if I put in the slash sign, it'll automatically put in the only web page that's in there. Then I have to close the link that automatically brings up my anchor close and you'll notice I have a little error message here I shouldn't have an empty anchor tag I have to have what it's linking to unit 4 assignment 1 and then if I save this I can test it and this is very boring but you'll notice I've left all the fonts alone but you'll notice my link should work and it does and then the next thing I have to do is I have to upload this and if you have set up your server correctly, you upload it right here. Otherwise, you would go into Run the Deployment Wizard. And you can see my deployment settings. I have my site name, my server, my username, my password. And the most important thing with is the remote path of public underscore HTML slash CIS142. That's where the file folder is going. So I've checked those. I'm just going to hit the up arrow and that should be uploading everything to my site. Next thing that I should check is I should go to my CIS142 page and if it hasn't updated you should refresh it to make sure it's current and then I should be able to go to Unit 4 Assignment 1 and this is what I programmed. So you'll program the whole page and then upload it. I have done a sample for you of what you need to do for this assignment, and I'll go over that in the next video.